How y'all doing this evening? Right. Try to uh, open up a uh, prayer service, amen? Amen. Y'all be so kind of being in your voices with me. Oh, for me, some of y'all know all of my songs, amen? Amen. 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 I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. Yeah. <laughs> 
they know you couldn't stay. I like the sound of that. All right. Oh, oh yeah. How was your name? My name is Sister. Did that? Sister Melody. Sister Melody. Okay. I'm going to start with Sister on the end. How was your name? Good day. Good day. Blessed day. Blessed day. Okay. Good day. Good day. Okay, so that whole world was pretty good. All right, all right. How was your day? Blessed day. Sister Burst, how was your day? Good day. Good day. All right. Sister Chante, I'm not going to get you mixed up this time. I know it's you. How was your day? Good. George? Blessed day. All right, all right. Sister Stan, how was your day? It was okay. It was okay? Okay. Sister Burst, how was your day?
we're going to step two, which is keeping short accounts. Keeping short accounts. I'm going to describe what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to read what the paper says. The general intro is the same as it was on last week, but I'm just going to go right into step two. It says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, Ephesians 4 and 26. So just by that title and that scripture, you can just about imagine what we're about to talk about, right? It's, it's the whole concept of us holding on to unresolved issues instead of getting the issue resolved. Amen. That is something that plagues relationships all over the world. A lot of times we let things, when, when we, you heard the, the phrase, you let things build up. If something is being built up, that means it has to be on top of something. Something already got to be there. It's hard to have a build up if you take care of things as they happen, huh? Right. Okay, so let's take a look. The truth is so profoundly elementary, we often miss it. The Bible often uses images drawn from agriculture, seeds, reaping, sowing, seeds of irritation and annoyance, not plucked out and dealt with on a daily basis, will grow in our hearts. When they are not dealt with, as soon as we recognize them, they take root. Each subsequent encounter with that same irritation, which will always be linked to someone, will cause that root to dig just a little deeper. And the deeper it goes, the more bitter it gets. Scripture tells us a root of bitterness springs up and defiles many. That's Hebrews 12 and 15. And when it finally spills out or spits up, it defiles and hurts us and everyone around us. That's why Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, Guard your heart, for it is the well spring of life. It is the very source of all we are. What is in our heart spills out of our mouths. And it is by our very words that we often grieve the Holy Spirit. The trademark of love vanishes in the sight of the world. So this, this, these scriptures are using some terms that I, I want to give some clarity on. Because... In the Bible, in Scripture, you're going to see a lot of references to the heart. Right? Let not your heart be troubled. If you, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. Okay. And what I want to make 100% clear is that when the Bible is speaking of the heart, it is not literally your heart. Okay, give me one. This only pumps blood. That's it. It doesn't think. It doesn't hurt. It can't be broken. Its only function is to pump blood. Because this is the heart in a man. But the heart of a man is his mind. Right? So, not saying to replace, but when you see the word heart in these scriptures that we're looking at, substitute the word mind. Let's look at that scripture one more time. Let's look at... Um, Check this out. Uh, in the middle of that last paragraph, it says, that is why Proverbs, y'all see that? On page four, uh, two. So I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna put the word mind in, in, in place of heart. Y'all ready? Let's see if this makes a little more sense. That is why Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your mind, for it is the wellspring of life. It is the very source of all we are. When our mind spills out of our mouths, well, what is in our mind spills out of our mouths. And it is by our very words that we often grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Don't that make a whole lot more sense? Have you ever heard whatever's on your mind gonna eventually come out? I gave y'all the example in a sermon uh, a few months ago, but you have to understand and realize whatever you put into your mind, that's gonna be a, become who you are and how you are. I told you about a time where I had been listening to some Tupac all week. I'm talking about Tupac, Ghetto Boys, all these hip hop artists that it, it, that wasn't gospel music by far. And after listening to it for a few days, even though I know that those were just songs talking about something, because I had submerged myself in it, I had started to have the mentality of what they were rapping about. Y'all don't think it's possible? Trust me, it is. If you submerge yourself in mess, you're going to end up being messy. Right? If you, if you submerge yourself and inundate yourself and saturate your mind with foolishness, guess what? Foolishness is going to come out of it. So, with this lesson, if you allow issues to stay unresolved, to stay in your mind, it's going to come out. Because sweeping something under the rug has never been an effective way to solve problems. Looking the other way and ignoring has never been an effective way to solve issues. So let's bring this into church hurt, the church hurt conversation. Pastor, what, what do that have to do with Christ and Tia Child? There's some folks sitting in here today, right now, even online, have issues with members of the church, and it's two prong. One, it happened ages ago. Mm -hmm. Or two, the other person don't even know nothing about it. I found that to be the case. A lot of times, I'm under the understanding. I really believe in my heart of hearts that two Christians can get to the bottom of any issue with a conversation. I believe that. But there are some prerequisites. One, both Christians have to be willing mm -hmm. to get past the problem to get to a resolu resolution. Yeah. Number one. And number two, they have to practice the art of listening and effective communication. Right? Let's deal with what I, what I stated first. The problem that we have is lessons telling us to keep short accounts. A lot of us are holding on too long to something that happened too long ago. I joke about it, but it's the truth. We have family, all of us, folks who fell out because somebody took somebody's cake box at the family reunion, took some Tupperware from 1983, and y'all still ain't speaking behind some trouble. A lot of times, misunderstandings are just that. A misunderstanding. And if two people take the time to talk it through, I'm under the belief that if God's Holy Spirit is in both of you, and y'all are looking for a resolution, a resolution can be but what happens to contaminate that thought or that thought process? We have some things that the Bible speaks of. We have to deal with pride, mm -hmm. ego, yeah. the opposites of humility and meekness. 
we use that word meekness like it's a bad word. Like, like, like it's wrong for you to be meek, gentle, and kind towards one another. Yes, even towards those when you have a misunderstanding. We don't have to always straight just jump into the ignorant pool. It's time now for that because honestly, how effective has that been when it comes to kingdom building? Other than you feel good for letting somebody know how you feel the way you wanted to let them know, but has it produced anything positive? It hasn't. All it's done is caused a wedge between God's children. It has stopped the flow of kingdom building. We can't even go out of the neighborhood and share Christ because we got to make teams specific so two people that don't get along don't be together. We can't have get-togethers. When you invite them, well, who's going to be there? Because if they I ain't coming, if they, we can't even come together. <laughs> we can't have official ministry events like we should because we can't come together because there's some folks holding on to some stuff now listen don't let me be misunderstood to downplay because that's not what I'm doing what you experienced was real to you and you were really hurt by it I'm not taking away from that but my, ad, my question is, how long are you willing to stay in that state? And I hear what you're saying. Well, they ain't apologize to me. What if they don't? Then what? Are you going to wait and put your life of happiness on hold until they apologize? So by that rationale, as long as they don't apologize, you are willing to stay bitter, mad, and angry toward that person? Y'all, that's a lot of energy. Keep short accounts. I said either the problem was long ago, or the person don't even know that the problem exists. How many of us find out years later that somebody was mad at we didn't even have a clue. They were mad at us. They'll walk up to you, you know what? I forgive you. Okay. Because oh <laughs> back in 1982, when you had said such and such, <laughs> maybe I don't even remember that encounter. <laughs> well, how many times have you? Uh, Y'all, I grew up watching a lot of television, right? And in the mid-80s, it was a lot of sitcoms. They don't have sitcoms no more, right? Not like they used to. One of my favorite sitcoms growing up was Three's Company. Y'all remember that? Somebody was going to overhear a conversation and get the wrong understanding about it. And that would be the rest of that show. Until at the end, they finally get an understanding with that what they heard was wrong, that they only caught part of the conversation, who they thought they were talking about, what who they were talking about. That whole show, that was the show. Every episode was based on somebody misunderstanding somebody else and that was the whole show and how many times have we been guilty of running with a misunderstanding check this out I'm, I'm going to take a step further and even when we get the understanding it feels better to keep the misunderstanding 
Because if I get an understanding, now I gotta change all this energy that I've been operating in. But it feels good not speaking to this person. And all about getting it. Get an understanding. For those that are close to me in my in my close, uh, and I don't want to make it sound like I have a hierarchy, but everybody has an inner circle, right? right? And for those that are close to me that know me, before I fire back, if I feel offended, one of my 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 uh, notable quotes is saying, "Hold up, what did you mean when you said X Y Z?" I'll ask that question. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I say be, be, before I, because I'm feeling some kind of way, but I want to make sure my feelings match the energy that you meant for it to be. Right. I at least give you that much. Mm -hmm. I had to grow to that. Because mm -hmm. it was a day and time, the way I took it was how it was. You bring five to me, I got five coming right back at you, Playboy. <laughs> but in that extra step of, hold on, before, and I'm, I'm starting to get angry, but before I unleash this anger, what did you mean by when you said such and such? Nine times out of ten, the person will explain what they meant, and what they meant wasn't what I heard. Now, I have a choice. Because I'm still mad. You know, just because you didn't explain, don't mean mad go away. Is that, is that fair? Right. But I have a choice. Do I operate in the now new understanding? Or do I stick with me how I feel right now? Most of the time, we deal with what's right now. We will attack the person's character. So you always saying stuff to fly on people. But what you understood that they said, that ain't even what they said, but you're running with the misunderstanding. So keeping short accounts, that includes get an understanding of even why you're offended. Now the Bible gives us instructions on how to do this because this will require you talking to the person you got a problem with. On that note, quit having middle me. Mm -hmm. let, let me explain what I mean by that. Y'all remember that game called Rumor? Y'all might not have called it Rumor. But it was a game where you would say something to somebody's ear. And they would pass it to the next person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And by the time it got back to you, whatever you said, Ain't what the people been repeating. So what? <laughs> Not even close. Right? Gossip. You oh. Okay. Oh, you said yes. Gossip. Gossip. Okay, I thought you said pastor. I'm like, okay. And so we laugh about how elementary that happens when we play that game, but we actually practice that. Because this is what will happen. I got a problem with Sister Lynn. Sister Lynn said something that bothered my spirit. But instead of me talking about Sister Lynn, I say, Sister Dave, you won't believe what Sister Lynn said to me. She had the unmitigated gall to say X, Y, and Z. Now she wrong for that. Next time I see it, it's going down. <laughs> Sister Lynn ain't got a clue how I feel about what I feel she said. But then, then let me tell you how it, it takes an even crazier turn. I'm going to be the person. Sister Lynn and Sister Davis had the problem. Sister Davis brought it to me. This is how it turns up. Petty, petty, messy. 
scenario. Sister Davis come to me and say, you know what? No, Sister Lynn come to me, you know I got a problem with Sister Davis. She had the nerve to say X, Y, Z. This is what the person that's practicing prevention of church hurt, that's practicing keep short accounts. Let me show you how she did this time. Sister Lynn, yeah, Davis, I'm sick of her. She always got some problem. Say, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. That ain't usually how she was. Not, not in my experience. What happened? Well, she said such and such. Oh, that just don't sound like I'll tell you what. After church, why don't we all sit down? I'll meet that. Because what you just told me, that don't sound right. Sound like you might have misunderstood her. Well, I ain't trying to talk to her. Well, would you be all right? I was there and y'all talked to her. Yeah, we can do that. Sister Davis. You have a moment after church. Mm -hmm. I want to sit down and talk with you and Sister Lynn. Well, what's up? What, what's the problem? It, I'm trying to prevent it from being a problem because I think a misunderstanding has taken place. Then we sit down and we talk it out. We figure it out only to find out that somebody misunderstood somebody. Mm -hmm. Do y'all see how quickly that problem mm -hmm. was resolved? In one sense, but do you see how quickly that problem could have spread through the whole congregation yeah. over a misunderstanding? Different scenario. Same situation, different scenario. Because we need Christians to do this, hold each other accountable with these short accounts. Because some of us like to brag how ignorant we were to people, and don't nobody ever check nobody for the ignorance. Mm -hmm. Those that are in my inner circle, you, you can't come to me and say, hey, I acted a whole fool with such and such. And my first response is, you brag about acting a whole fool? <laughs> no, you don't understand. No, I do understand. You just say it. You acted a, a whole fool. You don't even want me to hop five people acting a fool? Well, you don't even know what I did. I don't know, but you just say it. Mm -hmm. We ain't even got to the issue. I don't have to get to the issue. You bragging about acting a fool. Mm -hmm. Your whole countenance off. Right. Maybe you should be that person and say, wait a minute. Do 
Did you take the time to get another set? I'm sure it could have been a different. Why did you take that knee? Why did you go that route? In love, encouraging people to have short accounts. Listen, it would be foolish for us to think, for a pastor to expect that everybody's going to agree and we're going to kumbaya all the time. That's not reality. You know why? Because we're all different. We're different. None of us are the same. All these sisters in this William family, all of them sisters, but ain't none of them the same. Right, right, right. They're different. Versus <laughs> said, yeah, they, they ain't right, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to be different. Yeah. It's okay. But let's operate in unity with our differences. Amen. Church, we have to get to a place where we desire to get along. Like, I, I, I want it to bother our spirit when we're not right with someone. Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's an indictment on your spiritual maturity. If you okay with not being okay with somebody. And miss me with that. Well, that's just the way I am. Folks ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's not godly. No. You're letting him win. The devil. You're letting him win. Now, sometimes these the, the, the healing process is just that. It's a process. Some misunderstandings can be handled with a conversation and instantly we can pick up the pieces. Girl, that ain't what you said. No, well, I'm so crazy. Y'all hug and everything's great. But then sometimes it takes some time. Y'all remember back before we had cordless phones? We had the phone with the cord on the wall. Y'all remember that? Sidebar. I think we the only race of people. Y'all hear me well. Black people can't stay in one spot and talk on the phone. We can't. That's why that phone in the kitchen, y'all remember that's where it was, right? Had the long cord. Because, yeah, girl, I'm just like, hey, y'all come pick up these toys out of the truck. Girl, yeah, I'm just, man, I'm just, man, man, don't he did, y'all. Yo. Jim, Jim, come pick up your shoe. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it had that long cord. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you wouldn't say, hold on, I need to walk. You would just walk. Yeah, girl, we can. Y'all just move the cord. Uh -huh. with that long cord, it would get real twisted and tangled. Y'all remember that? To where it would get so twisted when you ask for all, you, you can own Hello? Girl, I can't, I can't talk right now. This far as I can move, this, this far as I'm twisted, you can't. Julia! And to fix it, what you have to do? Disconnect. And twist it. Straight. Pull a little bit. Ooh, look at this knot. I got it. Untwist it. Because it took some time for it to get like that. And in the same way, some of our issues with each other, it ain't going to be no overnight. There's going to be some time taken to straighten things out. Because while you have that misunderstanding, some ugly things were said about each other. It's going to take some time to straighten it out. During that time where you wasn't speaking, you didn't involve other folks. Now they mad at them because of what you was mad at. Take some time to straighten it out. 
in the house so long, y'all done had kids and grandkids. Now grandkids don't even speak to grandkids because your misunderstanding takes some time yeah. to straighten it out. Well, how do we straighten it out? Settings like this, Bible study, mm -hmm. Sunday school, prayer, a willingness to want to do something different. Is this making sense? Yeah. Somebody, can y'all hit me with some questions? Any questions? Scenarios. Cases where you have somebody that, because check this out, timing is everything. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the best time to deal with something, as long as temperatures and emotions are not flying off the wall, is why it's fresh. All right? I do believe in a cool off period. You gotta get thoughts so you can get what the right thing to say. I believe in going to God and prayer and saying, Lord, how do I approach this? I believe in that, yes. I absolutely. But this is this is where the problem lies. When we allow the devil to get into our head and say, you know what? I'm gonna go to this person, but they probably ain't gonna even try to hear nothing I'm saying. How many have already started answering for the person that you haven't even talked to? And then you say, Well, I know that I mean that's how they are. They ain't trying to hear nothing, but you're still limiting what God can do. Amen. And then you get into a mode of operation where you just automatically assume, oh, this person ain't trying to hear from me. I tried last week. They, they. And you leave out what the power of the Holy Spirit can do through to Christians, right? Okay. But, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't, don't forget it. But Sister Lynn says, is it possible that I can take it to God? He gives me peace. And it just kind of takes care of itself. That happens a lot of times. It, it, it does. But this is not specifically what I'm speaking to. I'm talking about where you know that there's a problem. You can't move forward 
and ain't no end in sight. Don't stay that way. Amen. But if you're taking it to God and he's working on you where you can be around this person and you were the offended one and you ain't even offended no more. That's a beautiful thing. That's all right. So I, I say yes. That works and it should go that way. But I, I, I'm sorry. I can't go along with we good, but I don't want nothing to do with you. back in my office, I'm going to tell it. <laughs> and we will. <laughs> this is the one time Terrell ain't guilty. He was standing out watching the shenanigans that me and Hamilton put together. We were trying to make this stand have a movable arm that she was able to do the video. Right? So we took a part from another stand and made it go on this stand. It ain't working like it's supposed to work, but it worked. And back there, I said, we had to put a, a little bit of African-American ingenuity in place. <laughs> Y'all have heard the other version, but I dare not say it. In this here microphone. <laughs> it's getting the job done. Yeah. But it's not the way it should be. Right? A lot of us operate in our spiritual walk where we can make do. But it ain't the way God designed it. Mm -hmm. We all had that toilet. It would flush, but you had to jiggle it to make the water stop running. It worked, but it didn't work the way it was supposed to work. For all of us that have used that all too familiar gray tape, don't play like you don't know what the gray tape is. The duct tape, we even put that on everything. It works, but it's not like it was designed to work. Amen. Amen. The problem with African American ingenuity and working with the duct tape, we get to a place where we become used to things working, but not the way it was designed to work, but then accept that as normal. Listen to me, hear me well, y'all don't miss this. We will get to a place where we have normalized spiritual dysfunction. To where, well, ain't nobody falling out. But are, is everybody experiencing the joy of the words that you could have? Are you really living in the fullness that God designed? Or are you just doing enough to get by. And we will come spiritually defunct to where we're all right with being just all right. Well, God never designed it for we Christians to operate in just being all right. Does that make sense? So we will be all right with stuff like, I ain't beefing with you, but I ain't got nothing to do with you. That's not true fellowship. 
No. It will speak, but we don't mean it. That's not true fellowship. I don't want nothing bad to happen to you, but I don't want nothing, I ain't got nothing to do with you. That's, that's not walking in love. So we have to be careful not to adapt and to adopt those thought processes that undercut the high bar that God set. But we make it comfortable for us to maneuver. Amen. I'm going to come right back to you, Denise. Now, go ahead. Uh, while I'm out of thinking and waiting on the mic. Is this making sense, y'all? Y'all, 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 be, be fair. Yeah. Does it make sense? Okay. All right, go ahead, John. As I, as I said, we were thinking to do our part for ourselves, Amen. wouldn't we all be moving about in the same place? If I got an attitude problem and you got an attitude problem and you haven't got work on your attitude problem, because see, the problem is we want God to work on other folks' stuff. And we rarely ask God to change us. Like, like, it's happened since I've been here. <laughs> it's funny. Since I've been here, the temperature is a little cooler than what you're used to, right? Amen. I get it. Because you got a fat pass and that sweat a lot, and you need to be cool. <laughs> yeah, that's real easy to explain. And instead of me falling out, <laughs> I need it a little cooler in here. But it's some of y'all's mentality. Instead of you getting a coat or a jacket, you want the atmosphere to change to you versus you adapting to the atmosphere. No, I ain't getting no coat. Let it sweat.
I use that example commonly, but a lot of times we want everything else around us to change. Yeah. And we stay the same. Yeah. Well, my mother did tell me the only person that you have a chance on changing in any equation is you. So a lot of times we focus on what somebody else needs to do. But the prayer is, God, it should be, God, what is it about me that can be different for your glory? Amen? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, it was George and Israel. Like I'm, I'm coming to church to get the word to make me feel or make me feel better or do better, you know. And I've been in church a long time, and I feel like I'm not a baby anymore. I'm a mature Christian, and I can take this and take that, you know. But if I don't know why a person is mad at me, and I don't even know them, or I have never really had a conversation with them, not really. Because if I go up to them, then they turn away. If I say hi, it's like, ooh, you know. So, so what I do in those situations where I have, I feel like there's tension between me and somebody, and I don't even know them, they don't know me. What I will do in a setting that's not hostile, that's calm, that's not offending, I'm saying, hey, let me ask you something. Are, are we okay? we okay? Because, and maybe I'm missing something, but I just feel like there's tension. Do we have tension? Then, uh, then we can go from there. But if they say, no! But this is, hold on, but check this out. This is, then this is what I do. I did my part based on what the Bible told me. I made an attempt to make it right, but what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to return that energy. I'm going to keep being a sweet person I know to be. Yeah. And even if I do see them, we make eyes, how you doing? Yeah. They roll their eyes, so be it. It didn't cost me nothing. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. I, I believe in killing with kindness. Yes. I believe in that. The Bible says when you treat people the way God told you to treat them, it's like putting fire yeah. either on their head or their feet. I forget what the scripture says, which one. But it makes them uncomfortable. Because remember, it's spiritual. So it's not the person. Make that spirit uncomfortable. Yeah. But again, don't let the situation change you. You be who God has designed you to be. And continue in that. Don't let somebody else change your temperature. Amen. Go ahead, Master. Pretty much kind of um, just hit my question. Go ahead, ask me what I was going to ask you was how do you handle or how do you deal with um, when the person that hurt you see a revive in the church from the church hurt and as Sister Singleton was saying you prayed about it God had worked on you and humbled you and changed your heart about the situation so even though the person that hurt you see a revive there, you go to that person, you, you let it go. But yet, when you go to that person, a piece of you feel like that person knows that they did hurt you because their temperament towards you. Um, they'll hug you, they'll speak, do all of the above, but you know it's not genuine. Because oh, when you walk off. Stop right there. We have to be careful with the knowing what was genuine or not. Okay. Just, just, I just, 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 just hear me. I want to reject that for everybody. Because if we get comfortable in that, 
we will always justify why we don't deal with it. Right. Okay, well go ahead. So not saying that to make me not or anyone not deal with a person, the reason I was saying not genuine because of their temperament after you cheat or after you hug. Because they'll give you a temperament back and you'll hear the grumbling, you'll hear the grunts, or you'll hear somebody say, Wow, she spoke to you. Wow, you know, you, you feel that. And so that it makes you feel like it wasn't as genuine. But if we're supposed to be in the image of Christ, you know, and God works on you and you trying to make it right with a person, but what you get back, how do you handle that? Because just being honest and keeping it 1,000% real, when somebody come back at you sometimes, they may catch you on the wrong day, not justifying that, but sometimes, you know, it makes you want to clap back or make you want to give that energy back. And they just, you know, torn your spirit within the church. You coming to get your praise on. You, it started at home, but then by the time you get to church, it's like, I'd rather just could have just stayed at home, you know, because of the attack that you receive. But you're going to be under attack every day, every morning when you wake up anyway. But how do you handle that, knowing that what you're doing is coming from a genuine place, coming from your heart, because how God has changed you. Let me let me help help us understand something so nobody will be caught off guard. The devil's assignment every day is to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't take vacation, he don't take sabbaticals, he don't even take breaks. His assignment every day for mankind steal, kill, destroy. The Bible says he walks the earth like a roaring lion looking for who he can destroy, devour, depending on which version of the uh, Bible you have. He is going to be on his job to rob you of the spiritual or the gifts or the, the fruit of the spirit which is joy, peace, kindness, all those things. He's going to do his part all the time. He ain't taking a break because you go going to church. He ain't taking a break because you really trying. He's going to show up all the time. That's why the Bible tells us to be alert because he's waiting for the right opportunity. He don't show up red with horns and a pitchfork and a pointed tail. That ain't what he look like. He is looking for an opportunity to catch you slipping. He will use people that are close to you to hurt you to get you off of your walk. He will use people that you can't stand and put them in your face. So you on a Sunday morning. So Denise asked, so what do I do with that? Do what the Bible says. If you resist the devil, he will flee. If you start putting word on that situation, it's hard for him to come back at it, especially if you believe him. So when, when, when somebody, I'm going to use an example. You speak to somebody, you, you hear them when you walk away. Uh, you spoke to her? Yeah, I, I did, but I really can't stand her. <laughs> this is what you can say to your, your, your spirit. You, you can use the scripture, no weapon formed against me shall I prosper. God, I know you hear. I know you heard that, but I'm not going to even worry about it. God, I want to praise you today. God, you've been good. Because there was a time that I would have clapped right back. Thank you for working with me the way you have. And you keep it moving. A lot of times we spend too much time, and I'm not saying this is you, Denise, but this is for everybody. We spend too much time worrying about the progress of other people. Because you progress, you're like, well, surely you done got a little better, but it's not your job to give them a report card. That's right. Because you ain't got a grade to give them no how. Amen, somebody. 
a lot of times we become spiritual uh, 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 critics where we will say, we've been into it, yeah, that was 12 years ago, surely by now you need to be, and we start doing that. Not realizing God is the only person that can change somebody. Amen. Amen. So celebrate what he's done in you. Don't worry about what other folk. What's on their agenda? Keep being you. Don't worry. Preach his word. Go by his standards and all that. And guess what? Romans 8 20. All things will work together. It'll come together. In his time. And check this out. Whoever is the problem, it may not be in your time that you see a change. It may be years from now that person is better. Amen. So, so be okay with you being the one that God is working on. If it ain't caught on another person, keep being who you are and doing what you do. Amen. Somebody else had something. Step. It was stepping in, then we're going we gonna to go to Dallas. There we go. You got the I don't. Okay. Do that while, while Stephanie talks. Yeah, we well, ask it anyway. <laughs> don't make Terrell walk on that. Okay. <laughs> some of us, that's where our peace lies. Oh, I ain't going to say that God's going to get them. So we're waiting. God, you said you're going to get them. God, they just got a new car. Get them. God, they didn't get laid off. Everybody else, God, get them. God, they just got a house. Get them. And we're actually hoping that something bad happens to us. And you know, God won't get them because your spirit ain't right. We should never want bad on somebody else. I know that's some hard pills to swallow, but that's what the Bible says. And you'll find yourself having more peace when you take the focus off of what should happen to them. God fix it. Go ahead.
just to answer your question, we, we're all in a growing process. These situations that I'm speaking of, it grows us up if we allow it. It could stunt your growth, but why not use it to make you grow up? How do I deal with it from a spiritual point? I, I, I stick to what the Word says, to what the Bible says. Even though it don't look good, I stick to what the Bible says, because that's what faith is. I don't go by how it looks, I go by what I believe. I believe that God, through His Spirit, has granted me the peace that surpasses understanding, all understanding. So the hate that I'm getting, God, I know that I have peace to block that. God, remind me of why I shouldn't even worry about that stuff. I know so-and-so hating on me and don't want me to, to operate in this capacity. God, I need your peace. To where their words, I ain't saying shut them up, just make it to where the words don't bother me no more. Pray those prayers. I see them coming, Lord. My spirit is, is already. I see them walking toward me, Lord. Fix my tongue. Let me just be able to hear what they got to say and keep it moving. Those kind of prayers. And little bit by bit, Courtney, over time, you'll start to look back and say, you know what? Two weeks ago, I wouldn't have handled that the way I handled it now. And then those small victories turn into bigger victories as you grow in Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight, the subject matter is extremely, it's extremely good. We have a former leader uh, that taught on the same subject matter. Uh, and I think uh, we're starting to actually sit in and resonate with people. Because everybody, you know, the, the ones that choose to make a difference within themselves and with their brothers and sisters do, is trying their best to do so. One of the things that, uh, well, not even as a leader, but since, since, since I am a leader, one of the things that you find that I'm guilty of, me, I mask extremely well. I'm mad at you, you don't even know me. But when somebody said I would hug you, I would talk to you, I would crack jokes to you, and you don't even know I'm upset. But what Terrell has to do, I have to bring my own paper with a red ink pen and figure out what my problem is. Then I'll take another step further. You are upset with me, and you don't even know me. All you know is what I allow you to see on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. There's no fellowship. You don't know nothing about me outside of church. But when the decision or something is said, then you have a problem based upon what you thought or what you heard somebody say. You know what? That even seals my my case. Yes. That is spiritual warfare. Right. Because the person don't know you. But the devil do. Yes. Yes. You are 100% right. He will use somebody that don't know nothing about you to try to throw you off course. Because it ain't them. It's spiritual. The, the spirit has your resume. They know you like you. This person that got a problem with you really ain't the person that has the problem. It's the spirit that's moving within that person. Amen. I think that's a good place to stop. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the word. Thank you, man. Y'all, I don't have any announcements. This time has been far well spent. Um, I try to do it no later than 8 15 and 5 minutes behind. So I thank you for your patience. Um, let's make sure that we're spreading the word for people to come out. I know some folks probably didn't come back and thought it was going to rain. Tell folks, don't let rain get, get on stop you from going to Walmart. So let's make sure we come to church, even if it rain. Amen. Listen, I want I want you all to know that we're moving this ship, but sometimes ships have to turn to get to the right direction. And in that turn, it may seem like it's slow, but if it's a big ship. If it moves too fast, it'll split. Some processes take a little longer than others. But if we all on the same page, we're going to get there at the same time. Amen? Amen. So y'all keep praying for the Greater Ideal Church. Amen. That she would be all that she was intended to be through God. 
Pray for your pastor. Amen. Pray for your leadership. And then pray for your church members. Amen. We, we, we get that. And listen, y'all, the devil don't like it. So let me tell you what he's going to do. And you're going to see it in real time. Out of nowhere, we will have problems that we ain't had problems with for a whole year. We will have issues show up that ain't nobody, we forgot about. That's what the devil do. It's going to be monkey riches thrown in business as usual. But that's the whole point. It's spiritual warfare. That dirty rascal devil don't play fair. So we, since we know that, let's give him a good fight. Amen? Amen. 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 If there's nothing else. Pastor, before, before you dismiss, look at you. You're talented. You see that? Uh, I need everybody to help me with something. Will you all say happy birthday to Pastor? Come on, now. Y'all ready to sign? Yeah. All right. One, two, three, and. Jesus. 